Greetings from Goblin Valley, Nissedal, Norway. I'm here so you don't have to be. Now, since the last uh, cotton experiment, I have had a lot of uh, questions regarding uh, fluffing. So this is the last cotton experiment uh, for this time. And the question is, should you be a fluffer or should you not? And uh, let's just make this video as short as possible and get on with the little test. These are pieces of uh, cotton from a Japanese organic virgin cotton pad. They are, I, I don't know, eight millimeters or something, seven. They are not too firm and, and not too hard when going through those five millimeter diameter holes. So the first thing I'm doing is that I'm twisting the tip to get them through the hole and um, I will uh, fluff one and I will make the number two just plain and not touch it at all. And number three will be um, twisted uh, tight. Let's just move on to, to that part. And this is number three. And as you can see, I uh, twist and twirl it. Um, I try not to break any strands, but this is getting uh, quite tight in the end. And it's unavoidable that I uh, twist and, and, and break some of the, um, the fibers in it. So there is that you have to worry about. Let's move on. Yeah, I know what you people are saying. Oh, he touched the cotton with his finger. He didn't use tweezers or stuff like that. So I use a control to test for that too. Should you touch your cotton with your bare fingers the least or should you wear gloves? Now that's also an interesting experiment. So basically here I'm doing uh, almost the same as before. I twist the tip, I put it through and I fluff the cotton and I leave one straight and I uh, um, twist uh, the third one a bit more together. Yeah, so fluffed straight and twin twisted rolled or whatever. Now I just do this this time. I don't use my fingertips uh, that much. This is a more gentler process than what I did on number three. So this is number six and it's more or less rolled like you roll a, a, a cigarette. So not so hard, but, uh, but uh, it's definitely more compact than the straight or untouched uh, strip of cotton. And here they basically are all in place. And uh, one, two, three, fluffed, straight and uh, twisted uh, with fingers and three, four and five, fluffed, straight and twisted with gloves and tweezers. And here they go into the cup of green. So uh, the length, they are quite long and I uh, jerk them a bit up and down and uh, make sure they are good and, and proper set. And uh, yeah, basically just leave them there. This is after five minutes and uh, there are not much to comment here. Number one and two are very saturated. Uh, number three, there is green up to the same level but not very saturated. Number four, five and six, four and five more saturated but number six has come equally high up on 
The Wick. This is after 12 minutes and stuff is looking kind of like equal except for number three. I think I was too hard on my wick on number three. <laughs> I might have wrung its neck around or something. But let's just see how this goes. Never say never and stuff like that. So 12 minutes in and um, yeah, except for number three, things look uh, pretty equal. After 15 minutes, just a change of perspective. But number one and number three doesn't look to be in too good of a shape. And a shot from the underside after 18 minutes. And uh, well, if you look at number four, five and six, they look like uh, four is shorter and uh, five is a bit longer and number six has come the highest up. And after 20 minutes, when I bent down and looked under the um, uh, plate, I could see a green streak on wick number six going all the way up to the plate. And if you look very, very carefully on the right tip of number six, you can see there is a green spot there already. Here we are at 29 minutes. It's very, very hard to see, but number three, just a millimeter below the tip to the left, there is a tiny little green spot. On number six, the green spot to the right of the top is more, much more obvious than last time. And after 40 minutes, I changed the lights a little bit and there is really not, not much change in this. I think there is stuff going on inside number three and number six at this point. But it's very cool to look under the plate because you can see one is short, two is higher up and three is higher and the pattern repeat itself on the right side. It seems like the fluffed cotton has reached its limit one and a half centimeter above the level of the green stuff in the cup. The reason I say this is that as you see after one hour there is still no difference in the wish, whistle, whistle uh, level uh, on the, the wick on the underside. Three and six just shoots up and uh, the other ones uh, looks like they they are stopping well below uh, where the plate begins. And this is a flyby, uh, if you can call it that. That was number six. This is uh, number five, and that's number four. Number three with its tiny, tiny green spot on the left of the tip. Yeah. And nothing on number two, and nothing on number one. After one and a half hour, I decided to open these uh, buggers up. I was tired of waiting for them. It looks like they were going nowhere. So I opened a number one up and I couldn't see a hint of green anywhere. I then opened number two. And not a speck of green in that one either. 
So I was curious about number three because it looked like nothing on the underside. Whoops. But you see there's hint of green on the side of it and a speck on the top of it. And uh, there you have it. It has wicked up into the cotton above the plate. So the little green speck was not just imagination uh, on my behalf. So uh, the fluffed number four, the one that was fluffed with the gloves and tweezers. And uh, not a speck of green. And number five, well, there you have a glimpse of number six, yeah. Number five was a pleasant surprise. Um, I don't know why number five uh, had green and not number two. I will not give credit to using the gloves. <laughs> now, here is a number uh, six. The one that was gently rolled and pressed together and not squeezed with the fingertips. And it's so saturated. Now that's brilliant for you. And here we see uh, the underside. And yes, the big fluffy ones are much more saturated. But the uh, uh, hard ones or twisted, the squeezed ones are much, much, much faster and carry uh, liquid uh, much longer. So um, this is just a proof of Durin's law of capillary effect. And we see that it is valid. I use the uh, uh, Japanese um, organic virgin cotton pads. Some of the cheapest stuff that's out there. And the uh, tests have shown that it's uh, like uh, second best, third best of all the stuff you can get your hands on. And it's 10, 20 times as cheap. So I've been using that stuff now for two, three years. And uh, I'm used to it and I can quantify it. And I, so I know how hard to wick when I cut a strip of it. And uh, yes, I have a lot of bags of different cottons, but uh, I never use them. So that's why they are not a part of my testing, for the most part. I test the stuff I use. Like, um, I test RDAs, I do not test tanks. I have never owned a tank. I have held it and found out I will never have a, uh, such a big and unbalanced uh, thingy on top of any of my mods. And that's just the decision I made. So, you should not fluff your cotton. That's number one. Number two, you should not twist or grind very hard on your cotton. You should basically leave the layers of a cotton pad where they are and maybe gently roll it a little bit between the palms of your hands. They say do not touch the cotton with your fingers. Well, that's BS. Uh, there are no conclusive evidence that, that it has anything to say at all. And, and um, uh, the reason number six was the clear winner and not number three is, of course, that number three was much harder wrapped with my uh, twirled uh, between my fingers, while number six was just gently rolled. So none of the fibers was crossed or twisted or torn or anything. So press the wick gently and uh, spin the tip, pull it through really hard and, uh, and uh, if you want to cut the ends you don't have to, but lead the wicks down like that into the well of your RDA and after you have reached the bottom of your well you can fluff as much as you want to. <laughs> 
but the wick should stay together and the layers should be a little disturbed uh, not much disturbed but firmly pressed together okay and uh, we use the cotton for a lot of stuff we can uh, after it has reached the bottom of the well we can sculpt with it we can we can guide the turbulence uh, where we want it to go and of course we can uh, use the cotton and spread it out in the well to avoid that the aegis is splashing around when we get really really excited when vaping so keep it simple Keep stuff together and keep your coils tight and your wicks hard.